Maybe you're buying a diamond for an engagement ring, or perhaps you're buying a lot of diamonds for your jewellery store. Diamond grading evolved over decades or centuries into a lousy, flawed system. This short video shows you why the current grading system is not much help and for you to know the secrets of how to buy the very best diamond at the very best price. These are the four C's and the other topics that we'll be covering. Clarity, colour, carat weight, cut quality, fluorescence and grading reports. There is a clarity grading system that evolved over time. But what you really want to know is what's the lowest clarity grade for a diamond to be safely eye clean. So-called experts might say SI1 or PK1, but choosing an eye clean diamond depends more on the stone's size than its clarity grade. Take this stone for example. If you have really great eyesight, you'd be able to see that inclusion in any size diamond. That's right, in any size diamond. But the inclusion is graded differently for different sized stones. In this 5 carat diamond it's graded as VS2, but in a 1 carat stone it would be SI1 and in a tiny diamond it would be flawed or imperfect. So if you want to buy a diamond that gives you the most bang for your bucks without seeing any nasties then you need to know it's the size of the diamond more than the clarity grade that counts the most. But if there were two inclusions half the size then the stone still gets the VS2 grade, but nobody could ever see them. Or if the inclusion was near the edge, it can be bigger and quite easily seen, but it gets the same grade again because the inclusion is further away from the centre of the diamond. And one like this inclusion could actually be covered with a setting claw or prong. A diamond size also affects its colour grade, as does its cut shape and cut quality. We grade diamonds face down from D to Z in the colourless range. Um, this is yellowish or brownish tinted. But it's weird that the colour of the diamond is graded face down through the back of the stone because you only see the diamond face up. And there can be quite big differences. It's easy to see that a one carat eye coloured diamond is yellowish when compared to a top colourless one carat D. But the bigger the diamond, the more obvious the colour becomes. The 5 carat eye is yellower than the 1 carat eye. At Holloway Diamonds, all our diamonds are H colour or better, and in very large stones we start a G up. Size and cut quality count a lot. And if you compare a poorly cut stone, it's yellower still. And all the other different shaped cuts face up even yellower than a well cut round. In this table, all of the stones are eye coloured and one carat. The well cut round shows the least colour. Radiant cuts have a lower but quite even colour. The emerald cut has an uneven colour in the corners. And oval, pear shape and marquise cuts have quite an uneven colour. Diamond size is measured in carats, right? Wrong, actually. Size is measured in millimetres, and sadly, most diamonds measure smaller than they should for their carat weight. This distribution chart shows the biggest peak at one carat. The peak represents a big price jump, a magic weight, that cutters must achieve in order to make a profit. But to sparkle well, most of those one carat diamonds should have had more rough diamond cut away. They should have had a smaller diameter in the 90 point category. This survey I conducted shows that more than three quarters of one carat diamonds had diameters that were much too small in size. 14% were actually smaller than the ideal diameter for a 90 point diamond. And a 90 point diamond costs half as much as a one carat diamond. But that's not the worst of it. Because these diamonds are cut too deep to achieve a magic one carat weight, they have lousy light performance and most actually look smaller even than good 90 point stones. So how can you know if a diamond is cut properly? That's the really hard question. Cut means two things. It means diamond shape, but it also means cut quality. And cut quality is the most important of the four C's. 
On a grading report, there will be a cut grade that runs from excellent to poor. This cut grade is based mainly on proportions and angles, and to a lesser extent, the symmetry and polish quality. Diamonds that sparkle the most have the best proportions, but it's nearly impossible to rely on a grading report to tell you. But you can use my patented Holloway Cut Advisor by entering the data from a grading report onto the link on the screen. You can also watch a video on how to use the HCA. You can compare different diamonds side by side, but only if you know that you have a perfect stone as a comparison. You cannot compare different diamonds in different lighting, and that's why I invented the Idealscope, which you can buy for just $25 from idealscope.com. Some jewelers say that fluorescence is bad. True, but not always. And there is a benefit. Adding blue makes diamonds look more icy white. And at Holloway Diamonds, we reject strong or very strong blue fluorescent diamonds that have problems. And you can take advantage of their better color for less cost. When I shine this UV light on these two stones, you see the one on the left fluoresces blue. However, even though it is an H or a lower colour grade, it looks whiter than the higher coloured D beside it when we see it in daylight. The D doesn't fluoresce. But in a colour grading lab, when we screen out the UV light with this filter material, you can see why it was graded H when compared to the D. The stones we reject are the ones that drop to a much lower grade. It's quite rare. I also screen out and reject any milky diamonds. See how this stone goes hazy when we take it closer to the light? In daylight or up very close to a strong light, a fluorescent diamond that passes all of the Holloway diamonds tests will appear icy blue and white. In a separate fluorescence video, I explain more about this unusual feature. Labs or grading reports, or certs as we call them, claim to protect consumers, which is true and it's also false, because many times at international conferences I've asked the owners and directives of the world's leading labs if they would buy a diamond for a loved one based only on a grading report from their own lab. And they all say that they would want to see the diamond themselves. Certs don't tell you if it's a beautiful diamond or if it's eye clean and really sparkly. They list the features that identify that particular diamond.